there are truly the shaping of two camps in these last days as we can see from the current events taking place. It is apparent as we started diving into the interviews and diving into these global climate strikes and as we started looking at the speeches of the face of the movement, Greta Thunberg. Many people we interviewed at the global climate strike saw Greta Thunberg as an inspiration and many of our youth are gravitating towards her and to her message. So on September 20th, we decided to go to San Diego, downtown to City Hall at the 9 a.m. rally. And at this rally, it started off with only about 10 students from local high schools. And we interviewed a few of them, and this is what they had to say. Uh, my name's Katie. Katie. All right, well, nice to meet you, Katie. Hi, nice to meet you. So tell us why uh, you and your, your friends are here today. Uh, we're here today because there is a climate crisis that is global, so that means everybody is involved. It's not just you, me, uh, all out there. It's everybody. <laughs> so we're here for that, and we're here to let people know like it is real. Um, many people don't believe it's real. It's happening. The planet is dying, and we need to do something about it. What do you think is the solution to climate change? Uh, the solution is you and me. We have to... Uh, take small steps at a time. Uh, usually it's something simple as just having a reusable straw or reusing your, uh, having a reusable water bottle or um, stopping using plastic. Like instead of using plastic, people are using banana leaves and uh, instead of buying paper plates, have glass plates at home that you just wash over and over and over again. Like those simple things like that can really make a difference in the environment and just Big things that we can do is actually just not buy into plastic product companies that have pla plastic packaging and going to the grocery store and um, taking your own reusable bags, of course, that's a huge difference, but just so small steps really do make a difference. Were you aware that countries, including like the U.S., are strongly influenced by the solution that the Pope has put out. He put out an encyclical back in 2015 called the Laudato Si. Have you heard of this? Um, I've actually not heard of that. No? And so in his, in his encyclical, he says that Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, mm -hmm. is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Mm -hmm. And so he's a big advocate. I don't know if you've seen him in the news talking about climate actually, change. Actually, I've seen a couple uh, quotes online from him about climate change. And have you heard of Greta, Greta Thunberg? I'm not yes. sure if I pronounced that correctly. Um, yes, so actually, we watched a couple uh, videos for her UN speech, um, of course, and then we watched a TED talk about her. She is very, very inspirational to um, our generation, and um, she makes me want to come out here today and uh, be able to do this and protest against um, politicians who fund into these. Companies. And so here's a picture of her. Actually, uh, she's actually she actually supports the Pope's encyclical, which is. Mm -hmm. Here, if you look at this picture, yeah. it says "Celebrate Laudato Si" on May 24th, and that's her and the Pope meeting yes. uh, back then, uh, not too long ago, back in uh, May, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now, Laudato Si, in the heart of the message of the Laudato Si, if you read it, um, it actually talks about like a Sunday day of rest. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of this. Um, some people use Sundays for the Sabbath day, so yeah. maybe that's what they're talking about. Yes, um, and I think also he's also. Tr a Sunday day of rest would be a whole world that would have a day of rest to give a break uh, from all uh, businesses being open, yeah. uh, shopping and selling, and that way the world could rest and be free of emissions, no one yeah. would be driving their cars and spend time with families. What would you think of, of something like that? I think it would be a great idea to give, some, give the planet a break once in a while, you know? Like, Sunday is just one day out of our year um, per week, so that's like 52 days out of our year, and that's not that... The Bible actually talks about a time when the uh, law will be enforced and we won't be allowed to buy or sell. Um, but the Bible also talks about a true day of rest that comes from God's law, the fourth commandment. Uh, many people have to choose which will follow man's laws or God's laws. And so what we want to do for you today, we just want to thank you for coming out. And we also want to thank you for giving us your opinions. We also want to leave you a free gift. Uh, this is a free gift from us. It's a couple of books on what we talked about, about the light you see, about the Pope's uh, solution to climate change. We just want to thank you so much for taking your time to uh, to be with us. Thank you so yeah. much, everybody. Luigi and Hunter. Hunter. All right. Well, nice meeting you guys. I'm Ernie. And I wanted to know, what are you guys out here for? So we're out here to protest uh, climate change. Um, 
climate change is the biggest ex existential crisis, uh, uh, crisis that um, humanity is facing right now. Um, and our politicians don't give a damn about it to do anything. Um, and also, I think it's a very generational thing. Um, I think the older generation kind of doesn't understand really the consequences, the catastrophic consequences that climate change poses on um, on our lives. And really, it's the people who are going to be on who are under 30 right now that are really going to suffer the severe consequences that climate change pose, that climate change is going to pose. On. Yeah, yeah. Hunter? Well said. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, what do you think? What do you think will be the solution? What What is the solution to climate change? I mean, there is one big bold uh, plan on climate change right now. It's called the Green New Deal. I know a lot of Republicans and conservatives think that that is too big and too too they can't imagine it um but right now it's the only plan that that talk that puts um that actually scale that actually um puts the solution to the scale of the problem um and and you know they like to talk about whether there's going to be no cows or instead of actually really thinking and coming up with solutions you know the green new deal is just a resolution and not a bill it just lays out the plan of what we all need to do to um of of the problem that we have and what we need to do I do agree. Uh, I'm coming from like uh, like Iowa. Uh, there's a lot of different like thoughts on the whole thing. I was actually talking with Luigi uh, and discussing like how uh, our farmers are gonna be able to afford these changes and uh, how uh, they're actually gonna be able to get rid of these monster tractors that burn all this fuel and are, is actually going to make a change uh, because I think it does start there and then moves in because uh, I was asking how's it going to work and he's informed me a lot on it, it really is. It starts from uh, taxing the wealthy, allowing uh, us to actually make these changes. Right. right. I, I have a better question or a better answer. So. Uh, it's a lot to ask of the American public for the federal government to go to the public and say we need to change the way that we use energy in this country and switch over from fossil fuels to a renewable energy um, source. And we understand that that is a huge ask of the American public, especially um, when it's too late to do any incremental changes. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of like moderate Democrats want to have that middle of the lane approach, which it's too late. We have all, uh, you know, the IPCC report said last year, we have 12 years to cut emissions in half. And I think people don't understand that means we need to start now. And so, um, you know, and that's a lot to ask of the American public. And that's why the Green New Deal uh, encompasses a lot of safety nets like Medicare for all, tuition free public college so that we're able to uh, educate our citizens to be able to solve these huge problems. Um, that's why um, a federal jobs guarantee, you know, we are going to be making a smart grid across the United States. and. And for us to um, be stuck and and be um, have cynicism about this and say it's you know we can't do anything it's too big too big of a problem you know that's going to be the death of us all. Are you guys aware of that the countries including the U.S. also have uh, are strongly influenced by a solution called the Laudato Si. This is the encyclical by uh, Pope Francis. W were you aware of the Laudato Si? I have not. No. Hunter, have you heard of? <laughs> I have not. Okay, so Laudato Si, I just wanted to show you something here. So Laudato Si, on number 237 of his encyclical, it says, Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. And so his, his is about the home, uh, protecting the home, and also caring about the earth. So that's the light dots you see. Now let me ask you another question. Have you heard of Greta Thunberg? I have not. Greta Thunberg. 
Team Greta. And so Greta Thun Thunberg is also on the same page with uh, Pope Francis. If you see here, there's a picture here saying to celebrate the Laudato Si on May 24th and join the climate strike. So this talks about essentially what the Laudato Si talks about at the heart of the message is a day of rest, a Sunday, a day where the whole world would just stop what they're doing. Basically, no buying, no selling, no driving, spend time with their family, time off work. What would you think of, of something like that? You know, I really think that anything from any organization, party, church, anything that helps solve this problem will, is, is a good cause for, for, is a good force for this cause. Now, do I think that a whole, doing a whole day to not be taking action, that's how I kind of view it, is not not doing anything, taking one day to not really do anything about this very urgent issue seems to a little, um, a little uh, like opposite of what really sh we should be doing. We have done kind of nothing for the last 40 years. Um, you know, fossil fuel companies have have spent millions of dollars on think tanks and and um, different ma uh, ways of of duping kind of the public and creating doubt uh, around really climate change. Kind of what happened with like cigarette companies um, where for some reason they convinced an entire generation of people that cigarettes didn't in fact cause lung cancer and lung issues. It's the same thing that, that that's happening but with uh, uh, fossil, fuel, fossil fuel companies did. Um, with climate change, except the consequences of climate change are universal and affect all humanity. So now going back to what you're saying though, I don't think that having a day to kind of relax and kind of not take action is really a good idea and really will be helpful because for the last 40 years we have been kind of not doing doing anything. So right. I don't know. And Hunter, what would you think? <laughs> It's stating facts. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand like what they're saying and what their vision of like being home, like uh, it's a family thing. But I, I agree with him. That, like, even if that means like maybe getting together and doing something about it rather than maybe together as a family. As maybe. a family, yeah. yes. Yeah. Not necessarily doing nothing, but maybe doing it together as a family. Spending time yeah, with family. Spending time with family and making a change together. Okay. Good. And uh, well, the Bible actually talks about a time when this this law, that the Sunday day of rest, will come into play and be enforced. And if not followed, there could be persecution to follow. Uh, the Bible also talks about a true day of rest, which is uh, the Sabbath or God's law, the Fourth Commandment. And many people will choose to either follow it, follow man's law, or follow God's law. And so, as you read from the Bible, that's that's what we're told is is going to happen. But there is a solution. There is hope. And so, I just want to thank you, Hunter. And I want to thank you, Luigi, for taking the time to uh, come out here and taking time to, to give your opinion. So we also wanted to leave you with a free gift. And let me oh, give awesome. you guys a free gift. This is on yeah. some of the topics we talked about. This yeah. is on the Laidatu like, Sea. Uh, As you can see from the interviews, they were very passionate about climate change. And one thing in common is they did have Greta Thunberg as an inspiration that really gravitated them to this message, this movement. So this experience was very new to us. This is the first time we've ever been to a global climate rally. So we didn't really know what to expect. We had planned to go to two different events, one at 9 a.m., which were high school students rallying at the San Diego City Hall. And at three o'clock was the Sunrise Movement, which was going to be in front of a politician's office in downtown, in, in front of a federal or state building. And so we decided to do both. At 10.30, a few students started shuffling in, and we had about 10 and up to about 20 people by the time 10.30 uh, hit. Students from San Diego High School marched from their campus in Balboa Park to City Hall. This was one of dozens of walkouts that took place in schools across the county. And it's something that's surprisingly not many people are doing much about. Once the students arrived at their rally, several came up to the microphone to give speeches. Many praised 16-year-old Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg for inspiring a global movement of young people. Sophomore Alia Castiglione says it's important to work for local change, too. I think that San Diego as a city needs to go carbon neutral and we also need to be 
leaders as a coastal city in the protest for nationwide and global change. Castile Leone says she hopes her peers stay engaged on climate change and register to vote as soon as they're able. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. We decided to do interviews. We went in with a plan that we'd have a prayer stop, ask for, uh, ask and solicit prayers to see if we could pray with people, and then eventually lead into giving them some literature. Also go into interviews, asking them, asking protesters what they were here for, and gradually lead into some questions leading into what the Bible says about these last days and about the Sunday law, which would eventually lead to giving them literature as well. The climate change movement, if you don't already know, is linked to the Pope's encyclical, the Laudato Si. Now, I explained this in a previous episode of Country Living, and that would be found on episode 39. Uh, check out the link up here. Now, these global climate strikes are strikes for the Sunday movement. As you've seen Greta Thunberg in conjunction with the Laudato Si and the Pope. Now, let's look at how this is a counter message to our message. One of their themes is to rise. We gonna rise up, rise up till it's one. So I'll that in any way. We're gonna rise up, everybody. rise up till it's one. When the people everybody rise up, up get arrested. Okay. Powers come down. Oh. When the people rise up, powers oh. come down. They try to stop us, but we get talking back. back. Okay, talk and what's our message? The time has come when, as never before, Seventh-day Adventists are to arise and shine because their light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon them. Now their message is to be hopeless and to fear. But I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. Our message is a message of love and a message of hope. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Their message is the end is nigh. Time is short and people need to start caring and preparing or we won't have a future. Sunrise movement. You guys, um, there's nothing I could tell you that you, you don't already know. Uh, we're in the 11th hour and you sense it. It's your world. We have not come here to beg world leaders to care. You have ignored us in the past and you will ignore us again. We have run out of excuses and we are running out of time. We have come here to let you know that change is coming, whether you like it or not. Our message is similar. Transgression has almost reached its limit Confusion fills the world, and a great terror is soon to come upon human beings. The end is very near. God's people should be preparing for what is to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. The return of Christ to our world will not be long delayed. Let this be the keynote of every message. The wrath of Satan increases as his time grows short, and his work of deceit and destruction will reach its culmination in the time of trouble. Now this movement, this global climate movement, is a youth movement. You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. Even that burden you leave to us children. The reason why we are here is because we want a future for our generation. The young people are the ones who, who realize like, hey, you gotta stop this train or you're going over the edge. If we only have one planet, then we only have one chance. There is a different energy leading this than the folks in the generations that came before. These young people are talking about a future world that they're going to live in. And if we care about them and we care about the future, we have to respect what they're saying. This change is coming anyway, with or without. We have a similar calling to the youth. 
In the last days, children's voices will be heard proclaiming the message as Christ in the temple solved the mysteries which priests and rulers had not discerned, so in the closing work of this earth, children in their simplicity will speak words which will be an astonishment to men who now talk of higher education. Then let the church carry a burden for the lambs of the flock in its locality and see how many can be educated and trained to do service for God. And this is why the youth has such a huge part in our message. I want to remind you, brethren, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first second and third angels messages there's no other work of so great importance they are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention i appeal to you brothers and sisters mobilize to the global climate strikes and give our message as seventh day adventists a message of hope of love and of a future our ministry will be again at these global climate strikes on September 27th on Friday. Friday, September 27th, this time in Arizona. And we will continue to attend these large gatherings. Please come out and help us pass out literature, to conduct interviews, to do whatever it takes as we pray together and ask God to lead to help us to save and win souls. And if not, I encourage you to do this in your own cities, to organize a small group or a big group. Millions of people all around the world are gathering and rising in this counter movement. How many of us are rising to the occasion? I hope that these scenes of these prophetic events are humbling you and leading you to realize that Jesus is truly coming soon and that two camps are forming. Which side will you be found on? And if you belong to that small group of people who feel threatened by us, then we have some very bad news for you. Because this is only the beginning. is coming whether they like it or not in the last days only a remnant still existed of these John speaks as they which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ be encouraged brethren at the scenes that are unfolding now it's time to arise and shine for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and our salvation draweth near. Now be blessed and be a blessing. Right now, there's a spiritual war against the commandments of God, specifically the fourth commandment. That's why we need your help to spread this message and to counter their message. You can do this by joining us out on the field or donating to our ministry or by going out with others in other places to spread these messages of truth. Because when God says remember to keep the Sabbath, it isn't a suggestion, it's a commandment. We know the time of trouble is coming and our opportunity might slip away. So I encourage you brethren to work for the night is coming. Maranatha.